Thank you, Father Bauer, Father Becker, Reverend Fathers, honored guests of Team Viani and Theotokos, and my brothers. In a modern world that has confined human knowledge to the merely empirical, in a modern world that has enslaved the desire for greatness with the chains of apathy, and in a modern world that has sought to relativize the power of belief into irrelevance, the Christian declares, I believe in God, the Father Almighty. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe in the Holy Spirit and in the Holy Catholic Church. Jesus begins his ministry, repent and believe. Thus, in order to believe, one must first confess that he doesn't have life all figured out, that there is more to life than one's own selfish desires, that left alone, nothing remains but the individual and his sin. Father Brian Dore is a priest of the Diocese of Lafayette in Indiana, who served as my associate pastor for two years, the vocations director of the diocese for 11 years, and is now the vice rector at Mount St. Mary's Theological Seminary in Emmitsburg, Maryland. He is my spiritual father, confirmation sponsor, and priest hero. He cusses like a sailor, smokes like a chimney, and is as jacked as Brian Clunkin. <laughs> Last year, Michael Bauer witnessed to his fight against fear, Kyle Nietzsche, his battle for brotherhood, and before you, I declare him a father. Father Brian Dore entered my life at a time when I needed him the most. I was a sarcastic, selfish, and scared boy, swaying in the winds of the world. Instead of telling me I was loved, the meaning of which had become lame from overuse Sunday after Sunday throughout my childhood, he told me the following, how much more fulfilling a life is that is in accord with God's will, how I really wasn't that special, and God, but how little God needed me. You may be offended at such a message. How could you say that to a young boy? But don't worry, Father Brian Dore is well acquainted with controversy and with criticism. <laughs> History has shown that great men are. For upon encountering a man of greatness, a magnanimous man, a prophet, apostle, a holy priest, or the Lord himself, one may either a person's inspiring example and gaze outward so as to receive what he has to offer him, recognizing in humility his own sins, failings, and need of direction. <coughs> or he may be, see this person's intimidation and turn inward so as, so as to avoid any change, hoping to remain in his world of comfort with what is familiar, while muttering hollow statements, stressing the individual of each person. I'm eternal to God for allowing me to have had the ear to hear Christ's message through Father Brian. Thus, through the sheer force of his words, which were supported by his example, I was able to truly repent. Only then was I be able to begin to believe, to believe what I had mindlessly spouted off throughout the previous years of my life. Father Brian is a man of deep faith, and it was this faith that served as my model. His unshakable faith in Christ burns within his heart and motivates his every ministry. I have found it impossible to even adequately describe another's spiritual life. But one quality that manifests his deep faith is his ability to in the face of mystery. For oftentimes, both in biblical studies, but also history from the person of Jesus, historical one. The scholar asks, who really was he? The middle schooler, what would Jesus do? <laughs> to the contrary of this idea, Romano Guardini writes, it is impossible to motivate the unwinding of his destiny or the manner in which he accomplished his designated mission. For their ultimate explanations are to be found only in that impenetrable territory which he calls my father's will. Territory for the reach of history's most powerful ray. So many times night conversations would end in utter silence, reaching a point where words 
no longer served a purpose. His faith led me to the contemplation of our Lord. The faith of Father Brian extends through his relationship with Jesus to a deep faith in the church. During his seminary formation, at a time when seminaries were struggling to grasp any notion of their purpose, he had terrible difficulties. He left seminary formation twice. He dived in, but found that the formation of the seminary was anything but formative. He would remain as long as he could handle, leave, and then re-enter, knowing that God had chosen him and that the church was worthy was a worthy bride, regardless of her incompetent ministers. His struggles didn't end with his ordination to the priesthood. His great zeal for the faith, his inspiring influence, and his attractive masculine identity beckoned him to take off as vocations director. When he took the position, we had one seminarian, and he was over the age of 70. Can you imagine Father Acri as a seminarian? <laughs> He tapped into Purdue University, leading Bible studies, adoration hours, knowing that the authentic proclamation of the gospel through the traditions of the church would fend for itself. He was accused of being too radical, too idealistic, and too demanding, from his superiors, brother priests, and more. But if Christ is right that you will know them by their fruits, the criticisms he received were nothing but the covering for a pusillanimous faith in God's ability to act. Upon being summoned to serve at Mount St. Mary's, he left the diocese with over 30 seminarians, and thousands of souls in our diocese have been saved by his witness. But his faith is not limited to our omnipotent Savior or our infallible church, and it is precisely because of his deep faith in Christ and his church that he has a remarkable and yet stubborn ability to believe in the human beings he encounters. From my own experience in the Knights of the Holy Temple, a high school serving fraternity which he founded in 1999, Father Brian would continually thrust more and more responsibility upon me. He would make great demands, and somehow, even when I didn't believe it to be possible, great responses were almost uncontrollably, uncontrollably drawn from me. His faith in me has been foundational for my ability to embrace my identity as a son of the Father and my vocation to the priesthood. Father Brian Dorr has a profound faith in Christ, his church, and others. His spiritual fatherhood opened up the vast horizons of our creed and enabled it to powerfully transform everything about my life. The creed ought to be the glory of the Christian, the assurance of our redemption, and the most valuable of possessions, or rather, the most valuable thing that possesses us. However, if the believer's proclamation of faith is reduced to mere drudgery, as it was in my own life, the very mysteries of God become our judge. In this upcoming year of faith, may we, may we receive and seek out the gift of faith, which Father Dora so well embodies, in order that we may encounter the glory of our creed, so as to inspire generations to come by our spiritual fatherhood. Praise be Jesus Christ. Now and